near the end of the New Testament is a small book called 1 John. And the writer of 1 John talks about Jesus this way. It begins chapter 2, verse 28. And now, dear children, continue in Him, so that when He appears, we may be confident and unashamed before Him at His coming. If you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of Him. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. All who have this hope in Him purify themselves just as He is pure. Children of God. That's who we are. We're called children of God. And somebody observed that uh, every church ought to have a sign out front that says, under construction because all of us are still unfinished works in the eyes of the Lord. When we first believe, when we first receive Christ as Lord, that work began in earnest. That we're all still under construction. We don't know what we'll end up looking like at the end. On that first day, we weren't given a, a photo of what the finished product will be. We were given a road map, a set of directions on how to live so that we will turn into what God sees we can be. Now our sermon series, Prisoner of Hope, is a series that can help us to see and understand that God isn't finished with us yet. Not us children of God. The best is still to come. And that should fill us with hope. I want to welcome you to the Viral Church channel here on YouTube. It's part of the ministry of Mohawk United Methodist Church. Here you'll find Bible-based words of hope and assurance, words of inspiration for living our Christian life out loud today. We need to live well during this pandemic especially. Well, we know that we're called to keep social distancing, which could lead to being a bit impatient. But God can give us the resolve to get through this and to continue doing good. I want to remind you where you're at, if you haven't already, to light a candle to remind us that God is present with us. It's a special day today because we are celebrating Mother's Day today. It is uh, a very special day and one that I'd like to just take a moment to pause and to, uh, to pay tribute to mothers. It's been said that a mother can touch a whole generation just by loving her own child well. Mothers are very special. There's a story about a, a second grade teacher who had been helping her class study magnets and at the end of that section gave them a test. One of the questions said, My full name has six letters and the first letter is M. I am strong, I am attractive, and I pick things up. What am I? And you know half the class filled in that blank and wrote, Mother. Well, that is often the case. And I thank God for mothers. On Mother's Day, we recognize and celebrate the role that mothers can play in our lives. And we know that there are some mothers who struggle with motherhood and others who can take so easily to the demands of motherhood. And on this day, we give thanks to God for all mothers. For without them, we would not be here. I'd like to share with you this uh, Mother's Day take on a very familiar passage from the Bible. It's called the Love Chapter. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You might have heard it read at a wedding. But hear this Mother's Day take. If I live in a house of spotless beauty with everything in its place, but have not love, I am a housekeeper and not a homemaker. If I have time for waxing, polishing, and decorating uh, my achievements, but have not love, 
My children learn cleanliness, but not godliness. Love leaves the dust in search of a child's laugh. Love smiles at tiny fingerprints on a newly cleaned window. Love wipes away the tears before it wipes away the spilled milk. Love picks up the child before it picks up the toys. Love is present through the trials. Love reprimands, reproves, and is responsive. Love crawls with the baby, walks with the toddler, runs with the child, and then stands by their side to support them and let the youth walk into adulthood. Love is the key that opens salvation's message to a child's heart. Before I became a mother, I took glory in my house of perfection. Now I glory in God's perfection in my child. As a mother, there is much I must teach my child, but the greatest of these is love. And so I want to say from the bottom of my heart, Happy Mother's Day. And thank you, moms, everywhere. I'd like you to join with me now in a, in a moment of prayer and just to let you know after the prayer we'll have our children's message. Would you pray with me now? Eternal and ever-loving God, you know us intimately and see who we really are. In this time of great uncertainty, we grow impatient. We want things to go back to the way they were. We're concerned for our family, our friends, and our neighbors. We also care for the weakest and the most susceptible among us. Watch over us, we ask, and grant us your peace. During this sweet hour of prayer, we come to you with our needs, our concerns, our joys, and our questions. We know that we are safe to come with you to come to you with all of these for we know that you hear and answer every prayer in your own perfect way and time that our prayers never go unheard never go unanswered and so we lift these to you now the lord we ask for wisdom and discernment for our leaders our national our world and our church leaders May they make wise decisions with only the best of intentions. May their decisions be effective and safe for all. We pray for the first responders, the medical personnel, and those who support them for their selfless and sacrificial, sacrificial care. We thank for protecting them that they remain safe. All honor and praise to you, O Lord our God. We pray for those who are struggling with health issues due to the pandemic. We pray for their families and the loved ones who may also be affected. Comfort them, we ask. We praise you, O Lord, our God, and we give you thanks for blessing us with many people who love and care for others in your name. Bless them and their labors of love. Watch and keep them, Lord Jesus. O Lord, our God, we turn to you with our concerns and with our joys. Help us be your church in this time of global contagion. May we reflect your grace and mercy in our words, our thoughts, and in our very lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. And now it's time for our children's message. So I invite the kids to come and join me for a time with the children. Hi kids, I'm so glad that we could spend some time together today. I've got a message just for you on this very special day. Let's take a look at the mystery box because I can hear something, but it's not very loud. So let's see what's in the mystery box today. Well, there's a pair of scissors. And those are pretty good. And well, there's a piece of paper. So you know what? I think I'm going to talk about how this paper is a bit like our moms. That moms love us and that we are this kind of this blank piece of paper that, that God is, is working with and, and our parents are helping to shape us. And moms love us so much. They love us, love us, love us, love us. How many corners are on this piece of paper? Can you count with me? One, two, three, 
and four. Now, when mommy and daddy fell in love and they got married, they had this. But then when they had you, they had an extra piece to love. And so they had this to give you, to love you. But you know what? Instead of having less love, less corners, let's count the corners now. One, two, three, four, five. Mom actually had more love. When you came along, mom's love grew for you. And so some of us, well, we may have a, a brother or a sister, and so when that happens, mom loves them too. And, and so mom gives her heart and love, and, and you know what happens? One, two, three, four, five, six. Mom's love grew even more. And you know that happens with children and with grandchildren. As we get more and as we give our love to, to our children and our grandchildren, to people that we love, we don't get less love in our hearts. We get more. Isn't that amazing how God makes us so that when the more that we love, the more love we have. And so know that not only does your mom love you, and we celebrate that today on Mother's Day, but God loves you even more than all of this. So we give thanks to our moms. I hope today that you can tell your mom that you love you, uh, you that you love her. Not all of us can do that, but when we do, I know it makes mom's hearts feel really good. So let's have a prayer today. We'll thank God for mothers, all right? Let's pray. Remember how we do this. Fold our hands and you repeat the prayer after me. Dear God, thank you for my mom and thank you also for moms everywhere. They help us and they bless us. And so we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kids, you take care. See you next time. Bye-bye. It's about time we sang this morning, don't you think? We're going to sing a wonderful hymn called Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Friends, if you're tired or getting tired, lean on His everlasting arms. He will give you strength to get through it all. Let's sing together now.
need to remember to lean on the everlasting arms of God. They won't wear out. They won't get tired. And you've probably heard, like I have, somebody said, you know, God won't give you more than you can handle. And I think that that is absolutely incorrect. Well, unless they mean you in the plural form of the word. Because there are times that as an individual, I can get overwhelmed. But by the grace of God, with God's help, and perhaps with the help of family, friends, people who care about us, we can get through our difficult times. I'd like to read today's words of grace to you. It's from the Gospel of Mark. And in this passage, Jesus tells us something very interesting about the kingdom of God, something that actually can apply to our situation today. And so I want you to listen closely as I read from the Gospel of Mark from chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And this is God's word for us today. Know that when we repent of our sin, that God in Jesus Christ will forgive us and grant us entry into His kingdom. It really is as simple as that. More on that in a moment, but first it's time for us to sing again a beautiful chorus called On Eagle's Wings. When we feel run down or tired, when we just feel like we need a lift, God will lift us up on wings like eagles. So let's sing about that precisely. take a moment and share my thoughts with you today I pray that they will bring to you peace and grace and hope so I invite you to join with me as we begin in prayer Lord may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of all of our hearts be worthy and bring you glory in Jesus name we pray Amen On the morning of her birthday, a, a woman woke up excitedly and, and roused her husband and said, Honey, I just had the most amazing dream. I dreamed you gave me a great big box for my birthday, and I opened it up, and there was another wrapped box inside of it. And so I opened that box, and there was another wrapped box inside of it. I opened it up, and there was the biggest, most beautiful diamond ring I've ever seen. What do you think it means? And he said, well, honey, you're just going to have to wait until later today to find out. Well, that evening, her husband handed her 
a very large box, and she opened it, and there was inside a smaller box wrapped. Well, she opened that, and there was another box wrapped up inside of that, and she opened it up, and inside was, a, was her present. It was a book called How to Interpret Dreams. Well, you know, sometimes we see things that aren't really there, or we don't see things that are there. Sometimes we misread situations, don't we? I, I'll tell you that this has happened to me, and, and I, I, maybe it's happened to you as well. Like uh, I can remember just the other day, I went to go look for some cottage cheese in the refrigerator, and I said, honey, you didn't, there's no cottage cheese. She said, yes, it's right there. And I said, no, it's not. I'm looking. There's no cottage cheese. She said, let me show you. And she walked in and pulled out the cottage cheese in a, in a second. Well, it was a different brand and a different color container. I was looking for what I knew to be cottage cheese, but there it was right in front of me, and I didn't see it. So sometimes we can not see things that are plainly in front of us, or the opposite can be true. I can remember one time many years ago before I went into ministry, I had convinced myself that because my boss was acting weird to me and around me that I was about to get fired. Well, as it turns out, they were just hiding the fact that they were going to have a surprise birthday cake for me the next day. And so sometimes we can read, sign, read into things that aren't there or we can miss entirely things that are very cl uh, clearly and plainly in, in front of us. It's kind of like the, 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 the story of the two numbskulls who decided to take a road trip to Detroit and they got uh, crossed over to the Michigan line and they saw a, a sign on the highway that said Detroit left, so they turned around. Well, you know, it's, uh, speaking of, of road trips, uh, uh, I think about family vacations. And maybe you've taken family vacations where you all pile into the car and uh, one of the first things to come out of the mouths of babes in the back seat is, are we there yet? I know that that's like fingernails on a chalkboard to most parents. But I can remember that when we did that, my mother, the wise woman that she was, would say, oh, you know, we're, we're not there yet, but keep looking because when you see this, and it, it could have been, you know, a, 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 a big sign that says Flaming Arrow Lodge or, or something that, that, that indicated that we were going to be at our destination, she'd say, be on the lookout for that. And that would keep us occupied. Of course, one of the ways it would keep us occupied had to have driven our, our parents crazy because we, one of us would say, look, there it is. And of course, it wasn't there. But, uh, you know, it was just that whole idea of, of uh, wondering when we're going to be there yet. Well, I think that analogy can be applied to where we're at today. I mean, if you think back ab about it, the last time that we were here in worship at Mohawk Church was March 15th, the Ides of March. And the very next day, the governor said, no more than 50 people. Well, that was earlier in the day because by the end of the day, he said, no, no more than 10 people at a time, which effectively meant we were not able to worship. That's been eight weeks ago, and in that time, there are some of us who have gotten worried, who are, are anxious, or maybe even fearful to go out because of the pandemic. But some of us have cabin fever, and we can't wait to go out. But all of us want this part of our journey to come to an end. Are we there yet? Have you asked that question are we done yet? Are we ready to go back to where things were yet? Are we there yet? Well, perhaps, oddly enough, we can find that answer in the Bible. In fact, Jesus gives us a very good way to answer that very important question. What, you might be asking, how could Jesus give us an answer to when is this pandemic going to be over? Well, you're going to have to hang with me on that. Um, it's, it may not be the answer, but it is certainly a very good answer and a very good way to look at this part in our life's journey. Uh, it happens um, more than one time in the Bible that Jesus 
uses this as a way to teach, as a way to answer a question, as a way to help us understand more about God and our relationship with Him. Earlier, you heard me read the words of grace from the Gospel of Mark about the baptism of Jesus. And immediately after His baptism, how He was was led out into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Now, other Gospel accounts go into much more detail than it does in Mark. Mark, we get the, uh, the Reader's Digest abbreviated version of that. But the interesting thing is, after Jesus is baptized, after he's tempted in the wilderness, then he comes back and reveals to the world that he is indeed the Son of God. Now, one of the things is that in the wilderness, he's tempted by sin, and maybe he's also tempered by that temptation to sin. When you temper iron, it makes it stronger. And Jesus, when he was being tempted by sin and yet did not sin, became stronger. And so he was able to come back and begin his earthly ministry. He began by proclaiming, by preaching, if you will, when he says, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. Does that sound odd to you that it's near? I mean, this is Jesus speaking. It's not that the kingdom of God has come in me. It's not that I'm the, the king of the kingdom. It's not I'm the son of God. I rule in the kingdom of God. He says the kingdom has come near. So what does he mean by near? I'm going to warn you. I'm going to talk for just a minute some theology, so be very cautious. There's a theological phrase that's called now and not yet. You can, you can ooh and ah now. There's, there's your theology lesson for the day. It's, it's in short that the kingdom of God has begun, but it has not yet been fully realized. It's not completely here yet. It's now, but it's not yet. I don't know if you can remember this far back, but when you were, what, five, six, seven years old, and your molars started to come in, and uh, maybe an adult would say, oh, are you, you know, you're getting teeth because you, you, you know, your gums would get sore, and you get these lumps, and then it would, the tooth would break through. But in that process, it's, now but it's not yet my new teeth are here but they're not fully here yet or as I talked earlier about a family vacation you know if I leave on a Saturday morning and I'm headed down to Disney World and it's a a 24 hour drive time if I make it uh, down to Murfreesboro Tennessee five hours away am I there Well, vacation has started. It's now, but it's not yet. You see, in Jesus' language, in His eyes, the kingdom of God is near. It's it's now, but it's not yet. It's begun, but it's not fully here. Well, how do we know that it's begun? Because we can see signs. We can see signs that the kingdom of God has begun. When we help someone, maybe even someone we don't know, when we show kindness to a stranger, the kingdom of God is near. It's now, but it's not fully yet. When we do what we have to do, and not just what we want to do, the kingdom of God is near. It's now, but it's not yet. When we tell someone who doubts that Jesus is truly the Christ, the Son of God, when we do it in a loving way, when we help them to see by our living that Jesus lives in us, 
that He really does love them, that He will forgive their sin. And the Kingdom of God has come near to them as well. And that's good news. That is the good news because this is what Jesus says in Mark. The time has come, He said. The Kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And so when we first believe that Jesus can forgive our sin, when we first ask for the forgiveness that only Jesus can grant us, when we repent of our sin, the Kingdom of God has come near. It's now but it's not yet. And so, way, way back at the beginning of of my thoughts, we asked the question, are we there yet? Kind of like Jesus said, we're near. It's now, but it's not yet. We're there, but we're not quite there. That means that we're on the right track, but our journey is not over yet. And when I wear a a mask, when I take care to wash my hands for 20 seconds and use sanitizer, those are all signs that the Kingdom of God is near. It's begun, but it's not fully here yet. And the truth is, today we're not yet out of the woods. Oh, we're closer. It's now, but it's not yet. As this pandemic continues to infect people and people die, the Kingdom of God is still near. It's not yet fully here, but we're one day closer with every day that we live through this pandemic. The recovery that we're all seeking, it's begun, but it's not fully realized. It's now, but it's not yet. And so we, brothers and sisters, have to show others the signs that the Kingdom of God is near. The recovery is is near. It's, It's nearly here, but not fully yet. And both will come. And so we're called to stay safe. To not live in fear, but to live with care and love and concern for our fellow human beings. Jesus is the King. The Lord of the Kingdom of God. The Ruler of Heaven and Earth. And He's got this. And isn't that the best news? the good news that we can proclaim in His name. Would you pray with me? O Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. God, when we get impatient, when we begin to question, when we wonder when it will end, help us to trust You to continue to endure doing all the good we can in every way that we can. Lord, we know the Kingdom of God has come near. It's now, but it's not yet. And so give us patience to wait. Give us grace to love. And help us to live each day for You. And so, Jesus, we pray all of this in Your holy name. Amen. We're going to sing one last time a wonderful hymn of faith called Because He Lives. Now, you know that there are days when we can get tired, worn out, stressed out, but God never does. We need time to take a Sabbath rest, to rest and renew and restore ourselves in God. And that's what we're hopefully doing today. And when we do that, we can sing with conviction that we can face tomorrow because He lives. Let's sing together now.
unless we passed an offering plate, would it? Well, we can't actually pass an offering plate right now, but we can in a virtual way. You're going to see a short segment on uh, how you might be able to give to support our ministry, whether it's uh, online or by writing a check. And what I'm going to ask us to do is, when this segment plays, if you're giving online to use the GiveLify app, or if you are going to send in money in a different way, then that you make out the check or whatever else you are doing during that segment. It's a virtual offering plate that we'll pass, and when we come back, then I'll say a prayer to bless that offering. Thank you. In order to help us with our ministry, you can give to Mohawk United Methodist Church simply by sending in a check made out to Mohawk UMC and send it to 2045 West 400 North in Greenfield, Indiana, 46140. From your mobile device, you can download the GiveLify app and then find us. Search under Mohawk United Methodist Church when you and follow the prompts in order to give. If you're on a computer, go to www.mohawkumc.com and on our home page, if you scroll down on the right-hand side, you'll see a Give button. Click that and you'll be taken to the GiveLify website where you can follow the prompts in order to give. Thanks and God bless you for your support. Would you pray with me now? Oh Lord our God, you've blessed us beyond measure, far more than anything we deserve or could even ask for. And so we give you thanks, Lord, that you have put us in a place where we're able to share our many gifts. Lord, we may share financially. We can share in all that you've blessed us with to help our fellow mankind. Lord, help us to grow in generosity, to be generous with others even as you have been generous with us. And so for these gifts which we give to bless you, we know that we are blessed. So we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ who gave Himself for us. Amen. Friends, the world needs us to be the church now more than ever. So be sure to care for one another. Look in on folks who may need some special attention. Be sure to, to check on 
family and friends, on neighbors, those at high risk. Check on them by phone. Keep social distancing. Follow the CDC guidelines. But we can continue to love one another. Another way we can love one another is to invite those that we know to join us in worship. Every Sunday at 9 o'clock here on the Viral Church channel, we can worship together. We're going to close now in the Lord's Prayer. What a wonderful, unifying prayer it is for all, all Christians. Remember after we're done with the service to blow out your candle. I would invite you also to set a, a reminder for every Wednesday and Friday at noon, wherever you're at, to just pause and let's say the Lord's Prayer together. It's a way to keep us connected through prayer. Would you pray the Lord's Prayer with me now? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be safe and be well. Remember how much God loves you. So if you're struggling with anxiety or fear, uh, carrying a burden, God would love nothing more than for you to come to Him. Give Him your stress, your anxiety, your burden, and He will give you back His peace. I hope to see you again soon here on the Viral Church channel. Be well. Stay blessed.